This is Optimal Health Daily, episode 173. How to get up right when your alarm goes off, part two, by Steve Pavlina of stevepavlina.com. And I'm your host and narrator, Dr. Neil Malik. Happy Wednesday, welcome back to another episode of Optimal Health Daily, where I read to you from some popular health and fitness blogs to help you optimize your health. Now, in normal days, I read a full post to you, but sometimes I break them up so that the episode isn't too long. Today is actually a continuation from yesterday. So if you're new here or skipping around, you'll probably wanna hear episode 172 first. When I was thinking about yesterday's show, it reminded me of an instance where I actually hit the snooze button and ended up sleeping for another two hours. I believe it was a Monday morning and I was supposed to be into work at 8 a.m. This was like my first full-time job after college. And so I was still used to sleeping until like noon. It would drive my wife, who was then my girlfriend, nuts. And I hated my job, so it was always tough to get motivated to get out of bed. So my alarm went off at 6.45 a.m., I hit the snooze button, and I slept for another two and a half hours. I didn't get to work until 10 a.m. When I walked in, my boss wasn't too angry with me, but just said, hey there, sleepyhead. I felt so, so badly about it. I would like to say that that was the day that made me change how I set my alarm clock and how I viewed getting up early in the morning but it took another two or three episodes of me showing up late somewhere until I finally got the message. I just wish I had known about this post way back then. Now, before we get into today's post, if you didn't know already, this is one of four podcasts where we read blogs to you. So if you like the format of this show, make sure you check out our other ones. My brother hosts Optimal Living Daily, where he reads to you from some of the best personal development and productivity blogs. Then there's Optimal Finance Daily, which covers blogs that are all about saving money and spending less. And then we have Optimal Startup Daily, which is perfect for entrepreneurs or anyone looking to make money on the side. You can find all of these in the same place you're hearing this show. And now, let's hear part two and start optimizing your life. How to Get Up Right When Your Alarm Goes Off, part two, by Steve Pavlina of stevepavlina.com. What's the real solution then? The solution is to delegate the problem. Turn the whole thing over to your subconscious mind. Cut your conscious mind out of the loop. Now, how do you do this? The same way you learned any other repeatable skill. You practice until it becomes rote. Eventually, your subconscious will take over and run the script on autopilot. This is gonna sound really stupid, but it works. Practice getting up as soon as your alarm goes off. That's right, practice. But don't do it in the morning. Do it during the day when you're wide awake. Go to your bedroom and set the room conditions to match your desired wake-up time as best you can. Darken the room or practice in the evening just after sunset so it's already dark. If you sleep in pajamas, put on your pajamas. If you brush your teeth before bed, then brush your teeth. If you take off your glasses or contacts when you sleep, then take those off too. Set your alarm for a few minutes ahead. Lie down in bed just like you would if you were sleeping and close your eyes. Get into your favorite sleep position. Imagine it's early in the morning, a few minutes before your desired wake-up time. Pretend you're actually asleep. Visualize a dream location or just zone out as best you can. Now, when your alarm goes off, turn it off as fast as you can. Take a deep breath to fully inflate your lungs and stretch your limbs out in all directions for a couple of seconds, like you're stretching during a yawn. Then sit up, plant your feet on the floor, and stand up. Smile a big smile. Then proceed to do the very next action you'd like to do upon waking. For me, it's getting dressed. Now, shake yourself off, restore the pre-waking conditions, return to bed, reset your alarm, and repeat. Do this over and over and over until it becomes so automatic that you run through the whole ritual without thinking about it. If you have to sub-vocalize any of the steps, for example, if you hear a mental voice coaching you on what to do, you're not there yet. Feel free to devote several sessions over a period of days to this practice. Think of it like doing sets and reps at the gym. Do one or two sets per day at different times, and perhaps three to 10 reps each time. Yes, it will take some time to do this, but that time is nothing compared to how much time you'll save in the long run. A few hours of practice today can save you hundreds of hours each year. With enough practice, I can't give you an accurate estimate of how long it will take because it will be different for everyone, you'll condition a new physiological response to the sound of your alarm. When your alarm goes off, you'll get up automatically without even thinking about it. 
the more you run the pattern, the stronger it will become. Eventually, it'll be uncomfortable not to get up when your alarm goes off. It will feel like putting on your pants with the opposite leg first. You can also practice mentally if you're good at visualizing. Mental practice is faster, but I think it's best to run through the whole thing physically. There are subtle details you might miss if you only rehearse mentally, and you want your subconscious to capture the real flavor of the experience. So if you do use mental practice, at least do it physically the first few times. The more you practice your wake-up ritual, the deeper you'll ingrain this habit into your subconscious. Then it will become automatic. Alarm goes off, get up immediately. Alarm goes off, get up immediately. Alarm goes off, get up immediately. Once this becomes a daily habit, you won't have to do any more daytime practice. This type of habit is self-reinforcing. You only have to go through the conditioning period once. Then you're basically set for life until you decide to change it. Even if you fall out of the habit for some reason, like an extended vacation in a different time zone, you'll be able to return to it more easily. Think of it like muscle memory. Once you've grooved in the pattern, it will still be there even if you let some weeds grow over it. Any behavior pattern you experience when your alarm goes off will become self-reinforcing if you repeat it enough times. Chances are that you already have a well-established wake-up ritual, but it may not be the one you want. The more you repeat your existing pattern, the more you condition it into your subconscious. Every time you fail to get up when your alarm goes off, that becomes ever more your default physiological response. If you want to change that behavior, you'll need to undertake a conscious reconditioning program such as the one I just described. Beating yourself up about your bad wake-up habits will not work. In fact, you'll just condition these mental beatings as part of the very routine you're trying to change. Not only will you not get up when your alarm goes off, but you'll also automatically beat yourself up about it. How lame is that? Do you really want to keep running that dumb pattern for the rest of your life? That's exactly what will happen if you don't condition a more empowering pattern. For good or ill, your habits will make or break you. Once you establish your desired wake-up ritual, I recommend you stick with it every single day, seven days a week, 365 days a year. And for the first 30 days, set your alarm for the same time every day. Once the habit is established, then you can vary your wake-up times or occasionally go without the alarm if you want to sleep in. But until then, it's best to keep the pattern very tight. That way, it'll become your default behavior and you'll be able to stray from time to time without serious risk of deconditioning it. I'm confident that once you establish this habit, you'll absolutely love it. I consider this to be one of my most productive habits. It saves me hundreds of hours a year, and it keeps paying dividends day after day. Think about it. If you oversleep just 30 minutes a day, that's 180 plus hours a year. And if you're at 60 minutes a day, that's 365 hours a year, the equivalent of nine 40-hour weeks. That's a lot of time. Now, I don't know about you, but I can think of more creative things to do with that time than laying in bed longer than I need to. I encourage you to give this method a try. I know it seems silly to practice getting out of bed, but hey, what if it works? What if you knew with total certainty that if you set your alarm for a certain time, you would absolutely get up at that time no matter what? There's no reason you can't create that for yourself over the next few days. Practice makes permanent. And if you want some tips on establishing the habit of getting up early, I encourage you to read or listen to these two articles, How to Become an Early Riser, read to you in episode 138 of Optimal Health Daily, and How to Become an Early Riser, part two, read to you in episodes 153 and 154 of Optimal Health Daily. Make it so, you won't regret it. You just listened to part two of the post titled, How to Get Up Right When Your Alarm Goes Off, by Steve Pavlina of stevepavlina.com. And that wraps up this post. The other ones were pretty popular, so hopefully this one helped you too. I love Steve's idea of real rehearsal, we call it, meaning you actually rehearse what you're gonna do so that you're prepping yourself for the real situation. So when he suggested, you know, make the room dark, get in your pajamas, act like you're actually going to sleep, and then set your alarm and then repeat, that is a very useful tactic. And again, when you think about exercise, this is stuff you already knew. These are things you do already. So why not apply the same concepts to other lifestyle factors like waking up when your alarm goes off. Now for me, what I found was most helpful was also having an additional motivator, something that got me really excited when I got up in the morning. Now this may not be the same for you, totally understand, but for me, it was the joy of getting up early 
so I could beat some of the crowds at the gym. Yes, I know I'm a huge nerd, but that's actually what really motivated me to get going. I didn't wanna have to delay and then get there when there are more people at the gym where I have to wait for the equipment. So that was my motivating factor and it worked really, really well. So maybe consider adding something that helps get you up in the morning. Now, once again, if you like the idea of us reading blogs to you, come check out our other three podcasts. Just search for the word optimal in your favorite podcast app and all four of our podcasts should come up. Thank you again so much for listening. That's it for today's show. And I'll see you in about 24 hours where your optimal life awaits. Hello, Life Optimizer. This is Justin Mollick, creator and producer of this show and Optimal Living Daily, the brother podcast of this one. Literally, I'm Dr. Neil's brother. If you like the format of this show, you'll love Optimal Living Daily too, where I also read to you from blogs, but cover other topics like personal development, finance, and minimalism from bloggers like Derek Sivers, The Minimalists, Zen Habits, and many more. So for more amazing content read to you for free, come subscribe to Optimal Living Daily too, and together we'll optimize your life. You've been listening to Optimal Health Daily. Be sure to hit the subscribe button to stay up to date on each new episode and head to oldpodcast.com. That's oldpodcast.com for a free gift as well as more actionable tips and resources to help you maximize your potential. Thanks for joining us and remember, your optimal life awaits.